All right. So, part two, lost and found, Jesus values you. So we're going to talk about value today. We're going to have some fun and some interaction, but in the back of our minds, we're going to be thinking about Jonah and how all of this points um, to what he must have been going through and how important it is for us to find other ways to deal with those sorts of things. So let's start out with a little bit of fun. Can you guys see this box? What kind of box is this? The lost and found box. So I'm gonna walk down here. Probably can't because I'm on video, right? Hopefully you can see some of these things because this is incredible what I found in this particular lost and found box. So it's a metal. And when I look at this metal, it's for reading. So somebody must have read a lot of books. Obviously it wasn't me because I'm on a one every 10 year plan. And um, somebody lost their medal. So they might have taken it on a trip, lost it out of their backpack. So somebody left a medal here. Pretty important thing. A sock, a sock with pizza on it. You might think it's mine because I like to wear funny socks. I got Shamu on my socks here. We've, we do have a couple people in our church who run an awesome pizza restaurant. Maybe that was their sock. So there's just one in here. I know you guys are gonna get a kick out of this one. Might not be able to see it in the back. What do I have here? What's up with that? It's a Cleveland Brown shirt. You guys are booing it. Do you, do you think that this would have fit me? How about my dog? Maybe it fit my dog. So I think that I'm gonna take this home now that I found it in the lost and found box. Ah, looks this. I think this goes with the Cleveland Brown shirt, right? Dog pound, that sort of thing. And there's one more thing in here. Ah, we were talking about reading. I wonder if it's the same guy. Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. And I look through this thing and I see a lot of underlines, some stuff highlighted, some notes in the corner. So this is probably a pretty important thing that somebody left in the lost and found box. And hopefully that person's gonna come and look for it. So do you ever wonder why things end up in a lost and found box? Maybe somebody didn't even realize that they lost it. It wasn't that important, so they're not looking for it. Or maybe they lost it somewhere and they don't know where that was, so they don't even know where to begin to look for it. Or it just wasn't worth it to them, so they're like, eh, just leave it in the box. Maybe somebody else will want it. So maybe there's something important in that lost and found box that you might be interested in that you would take and make a good value out of. So think about that as we go forward here. We like to play a game when we're on road trips. I'm a coach um, for some, some teams at Franklin Regional High School and we like to play this when we're, on, when we're on long road trips. And any of you that were on the middle school mission trip last summer, when we were going back and forth between Jeanette and Keystone Lake, we played this game in our, in our van it's called Trash or Treasure. So I'm gonna give you two options and I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand if you like the first thing better and then I'll, have, I'll say the second thing and you raise your hand and we'll see whose trash is whose treasure, okay? Make sense? Dr. Pepper or Mountain Dew? Dr. Pepper? Mountain Dew. That's pretty close, but I'm thinking Mountain Dew. Last night, Mountain Dew was a, Sheer favorite, I think it's because it's Saturday night late, they didn't want to hear me talk and they were trying to stay awake. All right, this is a big one because my son's home from school and we always do this whenever he comes home, we watch superhero movies. So Marvel or DC? Marvel? This, this, isn't, even, this isn't even close. Are there any DC fans out there? Wonder Woman maybe? Now we're talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. All right, this is a simple one. Ice cream, pudding, whatever the case may be. Vanilla or chocolate? I'm anxious to see where you guys all fall out here. Chocolate? Vanilla. Ooh, I think vanilla won that. People, vanilla gets a bad name, right? Because people always think vanilla's neutral. You describe somebody's personality as vanilla. I think vanilla is awesome, especially with the little Vanilla bean specks in it, briars. All right, two more, two more. 
This is gonna tell me whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Do you like going out or staying home better? Going out, staying home. Ah, we got a lot of people who'd like to stay home. I would think that after almost an entire year of the pandemic that we would wanna get out a little bit more, but good for you. And I'm anxious to see if there's any hands on this because I like both of these things. Raw fish, sushi, or raw oysters? Raw fish. Raw oysters. All right, Mr. Bill Seville and I are gonna get together and, and shoot a, a couple dozen oysters sometime the line. So you guys get the point, right? The point is that we all have things that are important to us and some things that aren't so important to us. Hence, the lost and found box. So I'd like to switch gears now and instead of talking about items that are lost and found, I wanna talk about people who are lost and found. Do you guys ever feel lost? Good days, bad days. Do you ever wonder if you were lost that somebody would come look for you? Give you a story from my past, it's kind of funny. I was a little tyke and I tended to get into trouble. I still get into trouble. Um, my dad was a wrestling coach at a high school and they were doing pretty well. We were at a big tournament and our team finished first place. So there was tons of celebration. I probably wasn't very interested in knowing me. I was running around the building, getting into trouble. I think I was probably underneath the bleachers looking for money or something. The team got excited, everybody was happy. My dad took the team to a local restaurant to celebrate. They started to turn the lights off in the gym, clean everything up. This little guy comes out from behind the bleachers. Where's my dad? Where's the wrestling team? So luckily there was a janitor that was getting ready to clean things up and he made some phone calls to the superintendent. This was back long before cell phone days, I'm aging myself. And through a couple different ways, they found out where the team was at, the restaurant that they were celebrating at, and they got a call. My dad got a call at the table and said, Mr. Florian, Coach Florian, are you missing anything? My dad's like, uh, not that I can think of. And then I think the light bulb went on and he goes, where's Timmy? Where's Timmy? And the entire wrestling team's looking around. Sure enough, he'd left me at the school while they were out celebrating. So obviously I wasn't important enough for my dad to not leave me behind, but it all worked out. But let's take that a little bit step further, a little bit more on a little more solemn nature. And hopefully you never get to the point where you're so lost that you feel like you don't matter. Like Pastor JD said, you always matter. God always wants you to be part of his life. So on the flip side, I want you to think about other people who may be lost. More often than not, we're Christians, we're usually doing pretty well, but there's other people who don't necessarily have God in their life. Those people are lost. So on the flip side, think about ways that you might be able to seek out people that, that are lost and let them know that they matter. Which gets us into the whole concept of parables. This is part two, as we talked about. Hopefully you guys remember part one, which was the parable of the lost sheep that Pastor Joel talked about last week. When we talk about the parables, at least the ones that we're gonna talk about in the Lost and Found series, it's important to understand who Jesus was talking to. Does anybody remember who he was talking to last week? Pharisees. He was talking to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees are these head muckety mucks that are holier than thou, that are in charge of religion back in the day. Um, Jesus was talking to them when he talked about the, par the parables. And the Pharisees had really gotten things wrong. They were looking at things the wrong way. They were looking at people the wrong way. They were trying to place value on people. They were self-righteous, condescending, and arrogant. They didn't love people for who they were. They loved them based on the rules that they followed. So the Pharisees got it all wrong, and especially they got it all wrong about Jesus. They said, what is this guy doing hanging out with people who are lost, people who are prostitutes, sinners, people who are homeless, who don't have many things. So if you remember last week, the parable of the last sheep, let's review some key portions of that story. We could have Luke 
There we go. So I'm just going to hit some key things that were going on in that parable. First of all, we had tax collectors and sinners. And Jesus was hanging out with them, telling them stories. And these Pharisees, these arrogant, condescending, self-righteous Pharisees said, who is this guy that he welcomes sinners to be with him? He welcomes the lost to be with him. Key part of four, that even like he chases one of a hundred lost sheep, he rejoices when he finds that lost sheep. Pharisees didn't get that. Same way that people rejoice in heaven when they find that sheep. So he used these simple stories to try to Pharisee, tell the Pharisees what's going on. So let's roll into the, the, the parable from this week, Luke 15, eight through 10. This is the parable of the lost coin. This is a, a woman who's got 10 silver coins to her name. Let me read this. Or suppose a woman has $10, 10 coins, and loses one. So again, Jesus is telling this story to the Pharisees. He's boiling it down to a very simple math problem because the Pharisees don't seem to get it. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the entire house, search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So he's telling the Pharisees, this is a simple story, right? Simple math, 10 coins, one's lost. She does everything she can to find it. The Pharisees are rich. They've got everything. They don't probably care about one coin. But to this woman, one coin was important. It was an entire day's wages, an entire day's work. So she wanted to find that coin. So Jesus' lesson was nobody, no coin is unimportant enough not to find it. So heck yeah, the entire town celebrated and she celebrated, her neighbor celebrated when she found the coin. So just like the first parable of the lost sheep, the coin was important, the community celebrated. In the same way, when a person is lost and that person is found, we should celebrate. Because God celebrates, Jesus celebrates when we find that lost person. Jesus values everyone and rejoices when the lost are found. So just like the sheep in the first parable, and just like the coin and the woman in the second parable, we're concerned about the lost. So think about this from your perspective. If you've always been lost, maybe, maybe you've never had Christ in your life and you're lost right now, or if you've had Christ in your life but you're wandering right now, you're wandering away from him, you're like the sheep, you're drifting away, maybe today needs to be the day that you open up your heart and help Jesus find you. Maybe that's a decision you can make today or a way that you can start living today, reaching out to people and opening up your heart so Christ can be part of it. But I imagine this second example is a little bit more like most of us, that maybe we need to think about other people in our life who are lost and what we can do for them. Maybe it's the, the kid at school, if we have an opportunity to go to school, who sits by himself at lunch or who always gets picked last in gym class when we're trying to put teams together or the homeless people that we see that we always turn away from when they come up to us and ask for money. Or maybe it's our friends that we don't speak to anymore just because we've drifted away. They don't like to do the same things that we do. Maybe we need to try to help Jesus find those lost people. And it's kind of our responsibility as Christians to do those sorts of things. So maybe that needs to be our next step going forward. Let's look at Psalms 10, eight through 13 together. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor or anger forever. Doesn't hold a grudge. He does not treat us as if our sins deserve, as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, that's a long way. So great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, taking those sins away from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So that passage is telling us that nothing we can do can separate us from God. He's in our heart all the time when we're sinning 
when we're doing things we shouldn't, when we're not thinking about him, when we're not praying the way we should. None of that matters. He loves us no matter what. The Pharisees didn't, but Christ does all the time. So if I can leave you with anything, and we still got a lot of stuff to talk about here, I want to leave you with that he loves you and he values you no matter what you do. You can never take that value away. Even though there's many people, especially judgmental people, tend to overlook the poor, the hurting, or the homeless, the Pharisees didn't think that that was important. They didn't think that those people were holy enough. But Jesus did, and Jesus did, does. So if you think back to the stories when Jesus was on earth, he loved all those people. But the important thing is, even though he's not here in person now, he still does. So think about that. Jesus did, and Jesus does value us. So let's have a little bit more fun here. This is called a value calculation. I want you all to evaluate me. Who's good at math up here in one of the front tables? You good at math? What's your name? Okay, Katie. I want you to do some math for me. It's real, quick. It's real easy. It's only got $10 math problems with it. And I'm going to ask you guys by a, by a raise of your hand whether or not you think that things that I'm going to give you are a good value. And she's going to give me $10. And if it's not a good value, be honest, we're going to take away $10, okay? So by a show of hands, how about the fact that I'm a Cleveland Browns fan? Is that a good value or a bad value? Good value? Bad value. Be honest, be honest. All right, take away $10. I'm starting out in the hole. I figured that was going to be the case. Mr. Graham already told me, you know. The Browns, although this year was pretty good at the end. That doesn't happen very often. All right, here's another one. I'm a coach at Franklin Regional. Who thinks Franklin Regional is a good value? Who doesn't think Franklin Regional is a good value? Ooh. Franklin Regional? Not Franklin Regional. Oh, man, I think you got to take away 10 more. Where are we at? Minus 20 already. Okay, here we go. You, you truck drivers or your car drivers, I drive a Chevy Silverado. Who thinks Chevys are a good value? How about Fords? You better have your hand up, Seth. Fords. Dodge, Dodge, Chevys. Who thinks Chevys a good value? All right, give me $10, $10. Where are we at? Minus 10 still. All right, here you go. I'm gonna better stand down on this level. I'm only five and a half, five, eight and a half inches tall. Used to be five, nine and a half, but when you get to your 50s, you start to shrink a little. So who thinks that five, eight and a half is a good value? Thank you, Mr. Bell, you and I. Who thinks that five, eight and a half is too short and it's not a very good value? I love you guys. I love you guys. So give me 10. One more, one more, one more up on top of my head here. I don't have very many hairs up there. Who thinks that's a good value to be bald? How about a bad value, not so much value? You got me, you got me. The funny thing is, is I used to have hair like that when I was in high school. So you're not safe, you're not safe. So where did we end up? That, wasn't, that, wasn't a, that was a pretty good value because of bald. 30 bucks? 10 bucks. So I, 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 I tell you all that in jest, right? Because certainly my value isn't wrapped up in the kind of car I drive, the way I look, hopefully, thank goodness, or the team that I root for. My value is what's in my heart. And the good thing about it is, thank goodness, that Jesus doesn't hold it against me that I'm a Cleveland Brown fan or that I'm short and getting shorter. Our value is who we are, not what we are, what we do, that sort of thing. So this week coming up, think about the people in your life who might be lost. When you feel like you have no self-worth, think about those things. God wants to reach out to you. He wants you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hopefully you've read that in the Bible and heard it in songs. You are all made the way that he made you. He made you to be tall or short. He made you to have blonde hair or red hair. He made you to have big ears and a bald head. That's the way he made you. 
And that's awesome. So don't let the things of this earth ever make you feel like you aren't valuable to God and aren't valuable to us. I love you. Even those of you I don't know, I love you. Pastor Joel and Pastor JD love you. Your small group leaders, most of which I call friends that I know well, love you. Your parents, your coaches, your friends, your band director, your instructors, whatever it is that you do, those people love you. They're willing to pour their time and their love into you. So don't ever forget that. You can call me anytime if you need somebody. Please don't ever forget that. And this week, like I said, look for those that may be hurting in your life so that you can reach out to them and help them find Christ. Let's look at one one last verse together. This is Paul writing to the church in Rome. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing is too big. Let me, let me close this in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to talk to these people, these young adults, their small group leaders, and our pastors today. Thank you for the faith that our pastors have in me to be able to share your word with them. It's a sad time for us as we've lost one of our own. So please, again, take care of Jonah and Jonah's family so that they can have some peace through all of this. Jonah's looking down on us right now, saying, I... I really wish that I could have been found and that someone would have reached out to me. So take care of everybody that's in this room. Get us home safely. Let us all know that we are loved by you and your son. And um, I ask for all this in Christ's name, amen.